Now it's time for our feature address, which will focus on sustainability in our economic development. I am pleased and honored to introduce the Honorable Deacon Mitchell, Prime Minister of Grenada. And as Ron just mentioned, numbers, faces. Prime Minister is the ninth Prime Minister of Grenada since the 24th of June, 2022. What day is it today, people? 24th of June. 2023. One year afterwards, sir, we recognize, we honor, we respect your own personal brand. Prime Minister, all yours. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasant morning to everyone here. I was sitting thinking, and I'm going to say us, not you, that it's Saturday morning and some of us would probably have preferred to be outside on the beach <laughs> relaxing. So since you're all here, I think you deserve a round of applause. for fighting what may be your natural inclination to spend a lazy Saturday morning on Grandlands Beach. I want to take the opportunity to welcome all of you who are not from Grenada, to Grenada. I trust you have had an enjoyable conference so far and that the schedule has not been so hectic that you haven't gotten the chance to enjoy a little bit of the island. If you haven't as yet, I'm sure that Mr. Logie and others will be fantastic hosts this evening and into tomorrow, if time permits. So congratulations on the hosting of your 40th anniversary. Um, I'm happy that it's coinciding with a significant day in my new career. Um, and I will take that as a sign of good luck for both myself and yourself. So congratulations again and welcome to Grenada. It is my pleasure to address you this morning on your 40th annual Caribbean Conference of Accountants. I appreciate that this is the second day of your conference, and as such, it is my hope that you have been thoroughly enjoying the Grenadian hospitality and have taken the time, as I said, to venture out into our meeting spaces beyond this conference room. I have to admit that I was quite intrigued by the theme of this year's conference, Sustainable, sustainable Development or Responsibility. You are, after all, a gathering of finance professionals, uh, yet you have chosen to focus your attention on sustainability and the critical role that we all play, collectively and individually, in protecting our environment. I commend you for focusing on the bigger picture. In some spheres, we would call it macroeconomics, but you have rightfully connected the dots. The challenges we face in achieving sustainable development are multifaceted and complex. Our actions today have a profound impact on the well-being of future generations, and it is our duty to ensure that we leave behind a legacy of resilience, prosperity, and environmental stewardship. So yes, sustainability is your responsibility, as it is the responsibility of governments and citizens alike. We each have our part to play, and no action taken in the interest of sustainability is too small or insignificant nor too grand, nor too noble. For my government, the sustainable management of our natural resources and environment is paramount. We understand that our land, our marine areas, are finite resources. And these finite resources need not only protection, but preservation. Therefore, climate change mitigation and adaptation biodiversity, 
and habitat protection, as well as pollution prevention and control are key policy priorities. It is therefore quite fitting that this specific conference is being held in Pio Grenada. The tagline, as adapted by our tourism agency, and which is, I believe, proudly printed on your conference bags, is who we are and who we aspire to be as a nation, a pure nation. Sustainable development is not merely a buzzword or a passing trend. It is a fundamental responsibility that we must shoulder collectively. Earlier this month, this island joined the world in commemorating World Environment Day, a global initiative that encourages us to reflect on the importance of preserving and restoring our precious ecosystems. Under the campaign theme of Beat Plastic Pollution, we were reminded of our responsibility to actively participate in practices that combat and overcome the detrimental effects of plastic pollution. And I want to pause here just for a bit to say that, quite coincidentally, I took a coastal hike up the northeastern part of Grenada two Saturdays back, and it was astounding the level of plastic pollution that you see on our beaches, our coastlines, and all of the places that we picnic. It's almost as if we take a bizarre sense of pride in leaving our garbage, particularly our plastic, at the very places that we say we cherish and we love. And it was also interesting to note that you can find bottles coming from as far as Brazil. And you can tell because the names of the bottles, the language, the taglines. So it is quite clear that the ocean itself is bringing plastic from other parts of the world into the Caribbean. And so, as a government, we have to continue to focus on policies and activities that will lead to the protection of our environment. For example, Grenada's environmental levy is a tiny tax, emphasis tiny, placed on goods and services to help with effective management of challenging waste types. Here in Grenada, the levy collected on electricity and water goes directly to financing the Grenada Solid Waste Management Authority to support their efforts to keep our environment clean and safe. And most recently, the authority introduced color-coded recycling bins to begin the process of waste separation and waste recycling. It is also worth mentioning that many Grenadian households do in fact consume less than the threshold required for taxation and therefore they pay no environmental levy and in essence do not financially contribute towards our waste management uh, systems or the financing of our waste management system. So that burden is in fact a burden levied on those who actually consume up to and beyond the threshold. But colleagues, we are all in this together. The actions taken in Grenada affect the rest of the region, and vice versa. As the Caribbean faces increasing climate-related risk, such as hurricanes, and I think we all know many of our islands were under hurricane storm watch or warnings uh, up to yesterday. Rising sea levels and ecosystem degradation, building resilient communities and businesses are critical. This year, our hurricane season is predicted to be an active one. Of the 12 to 17 total named storms for 2023, five to nine of these are anticipated to become hurricanes, with one to four becoming major hurricanes. Colleagues, there is the proverbial need for us to get our houses in order. Natural disasters impact our lives and livelihoods, redounding to national, regional, and economic impacts all of which have a domino effect, and so we need to be ready. In Grenada, our National Emergency Advisory Council is alert and crucial to topics such as security services, shelter management, disaster relief management. These are all areas that are at the forefront of its agenda. 
regular regional exchanges serve to strengthen our collective preparedness and commitment to safeguarding ourselves. Through your financial acumen, you can help organizations assess and manage these risks effectively, enabling them to adapt and thrive in an ever-changing environment. I'm heartened to observe that all our islands are committed to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or the SDGs, which seek to transform our world by ending poverty and inequality, protecting the planet, and ensuring that all people enjoy health, justice, and prosperity. I recently met with the United Nations Resident Coordinator, Coordinating Officer in Grenada to discuss expediting progress towards Agenda 2030 and the SDGs, reiterating the importance of aligning UN support with our national priorities and optimizing coordinating and collaboration amongst UN agencies in Grenada. I'm grateful for the UN's continuous support, guidance, and collaboration efforts as we navigate towards sustainable development, fostering social progress to achieve the SDGs. If you're not familiar with your nation's national SDG status and the role that you can play to help move the needle, I challenge you to align yourselves and the companies and organizations that you represent with your national efforts. Sustainability goes beyond the environment and the impacts of climate change. Though these are clearly immensely important, the three established pillars include economic viability, environmental protection, and social equity. We spoke to some extent about the environment. As finance professionals, I don't think I need to say anything to you about economic viability or financial viability. And so I will speak a little bit about social equity. Social equity is the fair, just, and equitable management of our institutions serving the public directly or by contract, and the fair and equitable distribution of public services, the implementation of public policy, and the commitment to promote fairness, justice, and equity in the formation of public policy. So let's think education policing, welfare, housing and transportation. Those are all pieces of the puzzle that we need to get right for the collective whole. They require commitment to structural institutional changes and deep personal work on behalf of public administration. So both scholars, administrators, practitioners, and governments all need to prioritize and help in those areas. I encourage you to weigh such efforts by the moral, economic, political, and legal triggers, inclusive of equitable access and inclusion, equitable treatment, the equitable opportunity to learn, equitable resources, and accountability. Those are the equity goals to which we strive. But broken down, perhaps they are also the criteria upon which we can weigh the performance of a government. And I give an example. In our first 12 months in office, my administration has removed school fees at the pre-primary, primary, secondary, and commencing in September at the tertiary level at the T.A. Marshall Community College and the New Life Organization. And the question is why? While obviously we want to improve the quality of our education, if there are still sectors of our society who don't have access to education because they simply can't afford the school fees, 
what's the point of continuing to improve the quality of the education only for those who already have access. We have acted on long-standing issues. For example, the payment of pensions and gratuities to public officers. We have implemented twice by monthly payment of salaries. At a time when the cost of petrol was almost prohibitive, we completely removed the petrol tax for a period of six months, which actually cost the government upwards of approximately $30 million in lost revenue all with the aim of ensuring that petrol remained affordable for our citizens. We appreciate that as a government, it is our obligation to do all within our power to improve the lives of our people and our citizens. And we therefore want to ensure that our citizens become more active stakeholders in the process. As a destination, we are living our tagline and our welcome mat is out. We welcome conferences such as this, and I look forward to welcoming you back in Grenada for your near future businesses and personal travels. I implore you to take what you have seen and learned here and apply it within your respective countries. Our sustainable efforts begins with individual will and commitment. And so on behalf of our region, I thank and salute your profession. In conclusion, I extend my sincere appreciation to the Institute of Chartered Accountants of the Caribbean and the Grenada branch of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of the Eastern Caribbean for hosting this remarkable event. I applaud your commitment, as I said at the beginning, to be here on a Saturday morning, advancing accounting professions and driving sustainable development in the Caribbean. I extend my very best wishes to you as you conclude your 40th conference. My best wishes also to your newly installed president, Mrs. Andrea St. Rose, from our sister island of St. Lucia, and my very best wishes to the outgoing president. My government and I stand stands ready by our Caribbean and East Caribbean institutions and the Grenada branch to engage with you now and into the future so that we can continue to progress our civilization. May you continue to grow from strength to strength. Thank you. Honorable Prime Minister, we thank you for your inspiring words. And of course, we congratulate you again, sir, on commemorating your first day in office with several successes on the record. As mentioned, our newly installed president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of the Caribbean has a tangible token of thanks to you. Thank you so very much.